kitchen door. Five, six, seven, eight, eating cherries off a plate. Yes, I think it's six or seven or eight things we have to do today, or perhaps more. Let's see, perhaps you could help me count. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, knock at the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. There may be even more than that. So many things to do. We might as well start with the really important things. Did you wash your face this morning? Oh, good. Then you know how we wash our face on a warm and sunny morning or on a cold and frosty morning. Round and round we wash with lots of soap. And don't forget a strong wipe behind the ears. And did you brush your hair? Oh, that's fine. Then you know just exactly the way we brush our hair on a cold and frosty morning. By the way, do you have a curl on your forehead? Do you brush it off to one side or leave it there curling on your forehead? I knew a little girl and she had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. Of course, we know how to brush our teeth too, don't we? And it isn't hard work at all. How about cleaning our shoes? Can you show me how you do it? Ah, so, that's the way we clean our shoes. And after that, we can go marching off to school. You know how we go to school on a warm and sunny or on a cold and frosty morning. But there's something I almost forgot. A good thing I remembered. We should go around the mulberry bush once or twice. <laughs> Don't ask me why, though. Going round the mulberry bush is just something all the children do. Uncle Alex Campbell can tell us all about it, and we can wash our face and brush our hair right along with him. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush in the cold and frosty morning. This is the way we wash your face, wash your face, wash your face. This is the way we wash your face in the cold and frosty morning. This is the way we brush our hair, brush our hair, brush our hair. This is the way we brush our hair in the cold and frosty morning. This is the way we brush our teeth, brush our teeth, brush our teeth. This is the way we brush our teeth in the cold and frosty morning. This is the way we clean our shoes, clean our shoes, clean our shoes. This is the way we clean our shoes on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way we go to school, go to school, go to school. This is the way we go to school on a cold and frosty morning. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush on a cold and frosty morning. That was nicely walked and stalked round the mulberry bush. You know, there's a mulberry bush growing not far from where I live, up on the hill. It's really a mulberry tree. And the mulberries are delicious. They're very sweet and a dark purplish blue. They look a little like dark blue raspberries, but they're a lot more chewy. When the mulberries are ripe early in the fall, the birds love to come and eat them right off the branches. It's the only mulberry tree in that part of the county, and the birds come from all around, dozens of them, chirping away and eating their fill of mulberries. Why, they hardly leave any for the rest of us to eat. There are lots of other trees around with good things to eat on them. Peach trees with wonderful yellow peaches, and some fine old apple trees, though those apples sometimes taste just a little bit sour. And we have some fine pear trees that give us juicy brown pears at the end of every summer. We have one or two butternut trees that bear very tasty nuts. The squirrels like to eat those. It's always quite a race to see who'll get to the nuts first. My little brother or the squirrels. And who do you suppose carries home the most nuts? Uncle Alex knows about an especially wonderful nut tree. The only things it would bear were a silver nutmeg and a golden pear. I have 
had a little nut tree, nothing would it bear, but a silver nutmeg and a golden pear. The Queen of Spain's daughter came to visit me, all for the sake of my little nut tree. I had a little nut tree, nothing would it bear But a silver nutmeg and a golden pear The Queen of Spain's daughter came to visit me And all for the sake of my little nut tree Now let's see, shall we do some more work or shall we play? Either one will have fun. My grandfather used to say, work while you work, play while you play. One thing each time, that's the best way. All that you do, do with your might. Things done by halves are never done right. Suppose we really go to work for a spell, ready? We are going to pick a bale of cotton. Believe me, that's a lot of cotton. Let's pretend that chair over there is the cotton plant. You'll have to reach over and pluck the cotton from the plant. Bend down a little from the waist. That's it. Now take the white fluffy cotton and put it in your big bag. There's so much cotton to pick, you'll have to keep going faster and faster and faster. You might need some help, too, if you can get it. Your sister, your uncle, your brother, or anybody else who'll lend a hand. Yes, you'll have to jump down and turn around to pick a bale of cotton. You gotta jump down, turn around to pick a bale of cotton. Jump down, turn around to pick a bale of day. Jump down, turn around to pick a bale of cotton. Jump down, turn around to pick a bale of day. Hey, children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey, children, pick a bale of day. Hey, children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Me and my sister gonna pick a bale of cotton. Me and my sister gonna pick a bale of day. Me and my sister gonna pick a bale of cotton. Me and my sister gonna pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Me and my uncle gonna pick a bale of cotton. Me and my uncle gonna pick a bale of day. Me and my uncle gonna pick a bale of cotton. Me and my uncle gonna pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Me and my brother gonna pick a bale of cotton. Me and my brother gonna pick a bale of day. Me and my brother gonna pick a bale of cotton. Me and my brother gonna pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Gonna pick a bale, pick a bale, pick a bale of cotton. Pick a bale, pick a bale, pick a bale of day. Pick a bale, pick a bale, pick a bale of cotton. Pick a bale, pick a bale, pick a bale of day. Hey children, hey children, hey children, hey children. Jump them, turn around, pick a bale of cotton. Jump them, turn around, pick a bale of day. Jump them, turn around to pick a bale of cotton. Jump them, turn around, pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Hey children, pick a bale of cotton. Hey children, pick a bale of day. Now that we've picked all that cotton together, I think we should do some work with our head. Let's count from one to ten, and let's ask this old man for some help. I'm sure you've met this old man before. He's the same old man they tell the story about. There was an old man, and he had a calf, and that's half. He took him out of the stall and put him on the wall, and that's all. 
Uncle Alex says that this old man was married to the old woman who lived under a hill. You know how it goes. There was an old woman who lived under a hill, and if she's not gone, she lives there still. But it's the old man who will help us count from one to ten, the long count, with all sorts of things to help us remember. Got your thumb ready? Here goes one. This old man, he played one, he played knick-knack on my thumb with the knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played two, he played knick-knack on my shoe with the knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played three, he played knick-knack on my knee with the knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played four, he played knick-knack on my door with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played five, he played knick-knack on my hive with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played six, he played knick-knack on my sticks with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played seven, he played knick-knack up to heaven with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played it, he played knick-knack on my gate with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played nine, he played knick-knack on my line with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played ten, he played knick-knack on my hand with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home with a knick-knack, paddy-whack, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. I think counting with the old man is much more fun than counting without him. And here's another thing he taught me. Hey, Dorolot, Dorolot. Hey, Doralee, Doralee. Hey, my bonny boat, bonny boat. Hey, drag away, drag away. Boys and girls whose fathers are sailors like to say that one. And here's one I learned from a chimney sweep. He's a man dressed all in black who goes around sweeping out chimneys and flues. Flues are a part of the chimney to let out the smoke and the hot air from the fireplace. A fly and a flea in a flue were imprisoned. So what could they do? Said the fly, let us flee. Said the flea, let us fly. So they flew through a flaw in the flue. You and I can't fly because we don't have the wings. But still I wouldn't cry. We can do lots of things. We can prance and we can dance. We can fling and we can sing. We can walk through the hall again and turn our backs to the wall again. But we have to do that in a regular sort of way, one at a time now. Your turn will come too. Uncle Alex will see to that. I'm Jeanie. You can be Harold or Rosie. And Uncle Alex will be, you guessed it, Alex. When your turn comes, you can dance and you can sing and you can turn your back to the wall again. Water, water, wallflower growing up so high. We are all children, but we must not cry. Except little Rosie, the youngest of us all. She can dance and she can sing and turn her back to the wall again. La 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 la, turn her back to the wall again. Water, water, wallflower growing up so high. We are all children, but we must not cry. Except little Harold, the youngest of us all. He can dance and he can sing and turn his back to the wall again. La 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 la, turn his back to the wall again. Water, water, wallflower growing up so high. 
We are all children, but we must not cry, except little Jeannie, the youngest of us all. She can dance and she can sing and turn her back to the wall again. La 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 la, turn her back to the wall again. Water, water, wallflower growing up so high. We are all children, but we must not cry, except little Alex, the youngest of us all. He can dance and he can sing and turn his back to the wall again. La 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 la, turn his back to the wall again. After singing and dancing with Uncle Alex and me, why don't you sit down for a spell? I'll tell you the very short story of Paddy, who was a very bad boy. He did things none of us are ever supposed to do. His mother always told him, Don't you play near the railroad track, Paddy. But Paddy just didn't listen. One day, he went to the railroad track and began picking up stones. Along came an engine and broke Paddy's bones. Ouch, said Paddy, that's not fair. But the engine driver shook his finger and said, You shouldn't have been there in the first place. Well, his story is sad the way Uncle Alex tells it. But I happen to know that Paddy became a good boy afterwards, and now he himself is an engine driver on the railroad. Paddy on the railroad picking up stones Along came an engine and broke Paddy's bones Oh, said Paddy, that's not fair Oh, said the engine driver, you shouldn't be there On the railroad picking up stones Along came an engine and broke Paddy's bones Oh, said Paddy, that's not fair Oh, said the engine driver, you shouldn't be there I know another story about a railroad Uncle Joseph told it to me It's about old Hiram's goat A goat's one of the smartest animals I know and old Hiram's goat is even smarter than most. He does have an enormously big appetite, and he'll eat anything at all. One morning he ate a whole bunch of red shirts right off the clothesline. Later on in the day he coughed up the shirts and flagged down a train. The whole train came to a stop. Hello, goat, said the engine driver. Ma said old Hiram's goat. Old Hiram's goat, old Hiram's goat, was feeling fine. Was feeling fine. Ate three red shirts, ate three red shirts, right off the line. Right off the line. Mrs. Murphy the cook, Mrs. Murphy the cook, she took him back, she took him back, and she tied him near, and she tied him near the railroad track. The railroad track. That by fifteen, that by fifteen, came down the line, came down the line, and whistled with. And whistled that goat he coughed, that goat he coughed, with mine and main, with mine and main, coughed up those shirts, up the those shirts, and flagged the train, and flagged the train. I know a song that has a whole lot of fine animals in it besides a goat. There's a cow and a cat and a dog and some sheep. Uncle Alex heard it one morning as he went out to take the pleasant air. As I went out one morning to take the pleasant air, lolly toodlum toodlum, lolly toodlum day. As I went out one morning to take the pleasant air, I overheard a mother at telling her daughter fair, lolly toodlum toodlum, lolly toodlum day. Well, whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a cow, lolly toodlum, toodlum, lolly toodlum day. Whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a cow, 
And if you've finished milking, you can make the butter now. Lolly doodlum, doodlum, lolly doodlum day. Whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a cat. Lolly doodlum, doodlum, lolly doodlum day. Whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a cat. And if she's finished purring, you can set her on the mat. Lolly doodlum. Well, whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a dog. Lolly doodlum, doodlum, lolly doodlum day. Whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a dog. And if he's finished barking, you can tie him to a log. Lolly doodlum, doodlum, lolly doodlum day. Well, whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a goat. Lolly doodlum, doodlum, lolly doodlum day. Whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have a goat. And if he's all done button, you can row him in a boat. Lolly doodlum, doodlum, lolly doodlum day. Well, whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have some sheep. Lolly doodlum, doodlum. Whistle, daughter, whistle, and you shall have some sheep. And if they're finished grazing, you can send them all to sleep. Lolly doodlum, doodlum, lolly doodlum day. All the sheep have gone to sleep, but you and I, we are still awake. And we can go marching round the chair now. I'd like to march to a lively tune, wouldn't you? Not just an old oompa oompa, but something that really makes us jump. So here we go, down, down, downy. Here we go backwards and forwards, and here we go round, round, roundy. <laughs> 